So we're looking at heat versus temperature. Both of them are a way to measure the energy in a given sample. Okay? However, the temperature is the average energy within that sample. Heat is the total energy. Okay? So you could look at an individual student and say, well, their average grade is an A. So if I look at just an individual student in this class, everybody's getting A's. It's great. But if I look at the whole class, it's a slightly different system or a slightly different answer. So it all depends on kind of our frame of reference on what we're looking at. Okay? So heat is our total energy. It takes into consideration everything. Uh, temperature is your average. Okay? Um, specific heat. Now is it an actual property of a material. So if I look at, at the specific heat for an individual sample, what I'm referencing is the amount of energy that I have to put in, measured in joules or calories, the amount of that energy that causes the sample to increase in temperature by one degree, or one degree Celsius. Okay? So how much energy do I have to put into a gram of this sample to get it to go up by one degree? Okay? That is now different for all materials. So it's a characteristic of our material. Okay, we can use that to identify our compounds. Also, what does it give us? If joules over grams times degrees Celsius. I have grams over milliliters. I have miles over hours. What is the specific heat? It's a conversion factor. Right? It's a more complex conversion factor because in that conversion factor, how many units do we convert? Three. We have joules, we have grams, we have degrees Celsius. Okay? Or we have calories, grams, and degrees Celsius. Why do we have calories and joules as different measurements? For the same reason we have inches and centimeters. Okay. Heat is a very old concept. Different people established different units for how we measure that heat. We then have to deal with their defined systems. Okay. Some of it also comes from what you're looking at. Okay. Nutritionists typically don't look at joules. They look at calories. calories. Interesting feature, the calories that they're looking at is not lowercase c, it's capital C calories. Why? So they felt like messing with us even more. Okay? The capital calorie, I believe, is a thousand regular calories. Why don't they call it a kilocal? I don't know. I long ago gave up on trusting people to explain why they chose different unit systems. So depending on where you're going, you may see different units when you're looking at energy. Okay? The more relevant part is what we're going to be looking at. Notice that I gave you values, numerical values, one calorie, gram degree Celsius. Okay? When we're looking at the specific heats, it was established as the amount of energy caused to make a gram of water go up by one degree Celsius. So the calorie unit is because that's the heat amount that I needed to add. I needed to add one heat unit to cause one gram of, degree of water to go up by one degree Celsius. So that's kind of a nice unit because it's, it's one. That's cool. We can set everything off of that. Okay? Not everybody likes that system. And we also have joules popping up. So you'll see this kind of conversion factor show up or the relationship between joules and calories. It's there. If you move into 151, you're expected to use it as a conversion factor. Uh, for the sake of this class, we won't. Okay? But I do expect you to interpret your specific heats, okay? which gets us to an exam question. Which of the following substances is expected to have the largest specific heat? 
And this question is actually getting at a lot of different things. You guys want to try and take a minute and see if you can figure it out? I think I heard a yeah. Was that actually a yeah? Okay. I'll give you a minute, see what you can come up with. If you want to, talk to the people around you. What do you think the answer is? I'm hearing the answer is E carbon. Okay, why'd you come up with that answer? Okay, it's the one non metal. Today's Thursday. Just from my practical understanding of carbon, when things burn, it tends to be the only thing. Uh, interesting theory. I'm not sure we can kite work, work with that one. It's just that awesome. What else we got? So let's push the non-metal one a little bit further. Why is that relevant? Okay, there's an interesting observation. You go into your kitchen, you take a pot. What is the pot made out of? Not that kind of pot. <laughs> it's a metal. Your metals are what make up your pots. Jeez. Why do we use metals for our pots? Either one. They conduct heat. Meaning when I put energy underneath the pot, where does that energy go? Immediately through it. To heat up the food with heat. Okay? With temperature. So when I put some heat at the bottom of a pot, what happens? Very small amount of heat and the pot goes up in temperature very quickly. I get that degree Celsius rise for that mass very, very quickly. Meaning I need a small amount of energy. A small amount of energy to get one gram to go up by one degree Celsius means I have a specific heat that is tiny. So almost all of my metals have very small specific heats because their physical property is that they conduct heat. Okay? So we could go through and look at these. CA, metal or a non-metal. Metal. How do we know it's a metal? Left-hand side of the periodic table. CR. Metal because? Left-hand side of the periodic table. Copper. Where does it say copper on the periodic table? CU. So someone noted an interesting issue with this question. Notice your answer choices. Are they all in the same format? No. So before you start attempting a question, you should make sure your answers are all in the same format. So we shouldn't be looking at copper, we should be looking at CU. Now where is CU on a periodic table? Left hand side, it's a metal. PB, metal, it's not quite on the left hand side though. Why is that a metal? Left of our staircase, right? And carbon is C, now that we've done the translation, where is C on our periodic table? Right side of the staircase, making it a non-metal. All of the metals have small specific heats. The only one that's not a metal would be carbon. It should thereby have a higher specific heat than all the metals. That's how you answer the question. I do not expect you to have the specific heats for any of these things memorized, okay? which is officially how you would go through and answer it. Okay? But we don't have to have numerical values if we have some understanding of the properties and what these things mean. Does that make sense? Okay, for the sake of the exam, change the question.
which has the smallest specific heat. To have the smallest specific heat, what does that mean? We're likely looking for a metal instead of a non-metal. Non By making that very subtle change, what did we just do to your answer choices? Made this really, really hard. So if I made this switch to the smallest specific heat, what else would probably change? The answer choices. The answer choices. Give me some answer choices that make a little more sense. Now, which one has the smallest specific heat? Copper. Copper. Okay. When in doubt, if you look at a question, you're like, I have no clue. So number one, if you have no clue, stop reading the question, cover it up. Okay. Because if you don't have a clue, reading the question will likely just confuse you more. Look at your answer choices and find commonalities. Okay. This is where you can rely on some of your chemistry understanding. We've got metals and one non-metal. Which one of these things is not like the other? Which one of these things does not belong? That's a solid guess. Those of you that have not heard that, you are missing out. Question, Elizabeth. Is there any way to know, like, are you going to give us a question and just like all metals and say like which no. one? I would not expect you to do that because that requires understanding a whole heck of a lot more okay. than is necessary or within even the realm of scope for this course. So is there like a specific trend with this with like some specific no? Non-metals and metals. Okay. That's the only trend you need. Okay? Questions? Where was that song from? Thank you. Oh, Elmo's getting really specific. Your childhood was apparently better than mine. <clears throat> Conversions. You do not have to have heard of the unit before. Okay? We could do meeks and stops. We could do skittle farts. Okay? We don't need to know what the unit is to be able to do a conversion. We just have to have a method that allows me to convert. Okay? So remember that, particularly as we move into the next section, I'll go away, conversion. When we start looking at the mole concept, which was the video you all watched. It also showed up on exam two. And I get several people every year going, oh my God, I have no idea what a mole is. I can't possibly solve this question. If you look carefully at that question, you don't need to know what a mole is. All you need to know is how to convert it. And the conversion is in the question. Okay? What makes exam three so much more difficult than exam two, as far as the conversions go, is that in that exam two question, pretty much delete anything that says equals. Remove that information from the question. Now solve the question. You're responsible for knowing where those equalities came from, from knowing where those equals or those conversion factors come from. That's a lot of what we spend in this unit, is talking about how to find the conversion factors. We will still do conversions. We're going to still do the exact same method. Okay? But it's now a question of where do I find them, and hopefully no longer how do I use it. It's just here's the conversion, use it. The mole concept. How many people are like, oh, mole, totally understand that. That's an easy thing to see. Two people. And the two people were like, I don't even really want to show my hand. Okay. It's not an easy concept to understand. Okay. It's not because of how large it is. Okay. We can talk about traveling to the moon. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I can just point at it. And now I'm at the moon. Okay. Oh, I just get in a space shuttle, and then I spend however many hours and days flying there to get to the moon. Right? How many of you have been in a plane for more than 24 hours? Right? One person. Does the rest of us have any concept of the pain and suffering involved in 24 <laughs> hours being trapped in a flying metal box? Right? No. We can try and guess and approximate, but that's all we've got. Right? 
So what we're trying to do at this point is use the conversion factor and have kind of work towards our understanding of it. Okay? You won't understand it. You don't need to understand it. We trust the mathematics with people that can see zeros and stuff. Okay? And we just manipulate and use it. Okay? So we did that one more than enough. Oh, there we go. So Avogadro's number, which is ultimately the mole. Okay? The reason this was kind of created was that if we look at trying to run a chemical reaction, we need to be able to count things out. Okay? If I want to build a car, how many wheels do I need? Uh, your normal car. Four wheels. Okay. How many pounds of wheels is that? Didn't you all get here in a car today? Did you at least get here in something that had wheels? Okay. You know how many wheels there are, but you don't know the weight of those wheels? Come on. You use it every day. Okay. Yeah. We don't know the weight. Okay. Why? That required making a measurement, doing something other than with what we see. Okay? Same thing is happening with our molecules, except molecules and atoms are now so tiny that we can't see them. But we have to use an amount of them. So we have to collect enough of them together so that we can then manipulate them. But by collecting enough of them, how much did we need? Well, it turns out we needed on the order of 10 to the 23rd. Okay, well, 10, I got 10 fingers and 23. Well, if I get a couple people together, that's like 10 to the 23rd, right? Not exactly. Okay, that's, that's a lot of zeros. Okay, that's a really massive scale that we just can't really comprehend. But what we can do is take that thing as, I, that's a lot of stuff that I can't see, but I'm now going to change it to make it easier for me to understand. What I believe was happening in the video, I thought it was going to happen here, but I guess it's in the video. We talked about the farmer. Is that in the video? Okay. So some people are shaking their heads, some people there aren't. So let's look, think about the farmer example. Okay, we've got, what are we at? A farmer that had, what, seven chickens? Sure, let's say seven chickens. And they each lay seven eggs a day. I'm super creative. How many eggs does the farmer get at the end of the day? Officially per chicken, right? Mm -hmm. So we could say seven chickens, seven eggs, chickens cancel, days, if it says days, and we'd get 49 eggs per day. I'm like, cool. You go to that farm and tell them, hey, 49 eggs per day. That's how much you get. He comes at you with a shotgun. You're like, whoa. Why are you doing that? He says, I have no idea what 49 means. You must be stealing my eggs. Okay. How do you explain to him what 49 means? This is super stereotypical, by the way, and I'm not trying to make fun of farmers because they're pretty cool. <laughs> okay. how, how can you explain to him what that 49 means? What does he know? What does he probably have ready access to? 10. He can deal with 10. Okay. He might even be able to deal with a dozen. That one's a bit out there. But, you know, look at the big toes. Okay. He can get up to a dozen pretty quickly. So you can take that number of 49 and you can shrink it into a number that makes a little bit more sense to him and say instead of there being 49, well, there's really, what, four groups, almost five groups of your 10 fingers produced per day. Oh, okay, five. I can understand that. That's five. I've got five of those. Oh, and you're saying five of those, but each of those fingers is now 10. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, I got it. They're looking at a scale. You're taking a number that is too hard to comprehend and scaling it down to a number that we can understand. That's what a mole is trying to do. OK? 
Okay? Except it's not for a 49, because all of you are like, oh, that's dumb. I'm a stupid farmer. Or a stupid Mike for making fun of farmers for thinking they can't count that high. Okay? The issue is not with farmers or eggs or chickens. The issue is that a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I don't care what kind of farmer you are, you don't understand that number. Okay? And if you do, you probably don't belong in this class because you're smarter than me. Okay? That number is so big that we just need to convert it into something else we can manipulate. So we take this value that is so massive and it all of a sudden becomes one. Hey, I got one finger. I can look at that. Right? It's just trying to scale that down so that we can manipulate it. What a large part of chapter 8 is looking at is, number one, the scale of that and converting things around into that different unit. And it's like, well, why? Okay. But the other part of it is saying, what does this do for us? Why did we pick that number of all numbers? Okay. Why did we say a dozen was 12? Okay. It just had to do with a dozen. It was just a random decision, probably. Probably not. Someone actually probably had a good reason for it. Okay? But a mole had a lot of logic behind it because of how that then gets converted into our periodic table. Okay? So let's look at some just kind of nasty things with this. Bulk conversions. How many oxygen atoms are in 0.24 moles of O2? What am I looking for as an answer? I heard a couple answers. I'm going to go with the wrong one first. Atoms. It's not asking for atoms. Just can attest to this. It's asking for oxygen atoms. What is the symbol for an oxygen atom? O. What is O2? Two oxygen atoms, also known as oxygen, the molecule. This is specifically saying oxygen atoms. That might be relevant for the question. Okay. What are we starting with? Guess what you need to do? Convert. Convert. Answer James gave us was zero point, that's a zero, not a six, in case you were wondering. Point uh, one four four times ten to the twenty third. This is me writing, I didn't actually write down what James visual wrote. Maybe he added some more information. Is this answer correct? No, it's wrong. First reason it's wrong. I'll address that in a second. What do you got? Well, one of those no units. Unit. There we go. I want to. I want to hear the unit. So, what are the units on this? So, kind of hard to tell because we don't have the rest of James's work. So, let's take a look at what the rest of James's work says. He said the moles was on the bottom, uh, and he said six point oh two two times ten. The 23rd, ah, I keep doing that. 23rd and then 1. Can you confirm that for me, James? That is indeed what you have written? Yes. That is correct. <clears throat> Does anybody have any issues with how those units would potentially cancel? There's no O2. There's no O2. Okay. So, you tell me, should we get rid of it? What is your answer? You have O. What are you starting with? O2. So as a unit, that does need to disappear. So that should actually be mole O2. And you actually had a one there. It got deleted in my computer. All right. So cool. Now what happened to your units? I agree, moles of O2 disappear. What would your unit now be? There's, there's nothing written there. 
which would mean no unit, which then means you don't have your answer. Okay, so what is the unit associated with that number? So let's go back up to our conversion factor. It says one mole of things equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things. What is the thing if he's saying one mole of O2? He's saying it is O2, which means that needs to be O2. Yes? We now run into another issue about what word should we associate with that. Okay. Should it be atoms of O2? Define an atom for me. I don't quite accept smallest particle. Okay. A particle that is one element. Is O2 one element? Well, it's one element, but is it one particle of that element? No, there's two of them. So is it really atoms of O2? We could say it's the, the di atom, yeah. Okay. What do we call something that is multiple atoms? A molecule. So it's not atoms of O2, that would actually be a molecule of O2. So, well, that's not a big deal. So really, this shouldn't be oxygen atoms, that should be oxygen molecules. Well, what did the question ask for? Oxygen atoms. And it's not just the word that's the problem here. Because that says O2, and that says, oh, what do we have to do? There's another conversion that must happen. We need atoms of O as our unit. It has to show up. Not only that, what else do I need to do? I need to cancel out molecules of O2. Jerry. Oh, I see what you're saying. I did it again. You're going to have to watch out for that. I have now written 10 to the 23rd or 10 to that power four times, and each of those four times, I've had to erase it and write 23rd. So, no, call me out on it, because I'm definitely missing it. I thought you were actually saying where that molecule went. Do you know a conversion factor between atoms of oxygen and molecules of O2? There are two atoms of oxygen in one molecule of O2. Like, whoa, where did you come up with that? What does that two mean? There are two oxygen atoms in that one molecule of O2. We've found a conversion factor. That conversion factor is in our correct formula. Okay? You're responsible for finding it. Which means, unfortunately, what happens to James's answer? It's incorrect. Okay? Because we weren't careful with our nomenclature on what the question was asking for when you did that answer. You just assumed that those things just become. They can't just become. The units must be correct. Okay? So if we now multiply that answer by 2, we're golden. We've got our answer. Um, so, calculator-wise, what would happen here? 
molecules of O2 cancel. We take 0 0.240 times 6.022 times 2 times 10 to the 23rd. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, can you add that in again? Yep. And so the, the part that's causing me to be like, ah, 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 and great, is you're saying add. You're not adding it. Know. You're multiplying it. Can I save it for the end? <laughs> sure. You can save it for the end. All right. And that means we'd end up with, what was it? I just am not getting the right answer. Yeah, Zero point. Are different. Mm -hmm. I'm, getting one, I'm getting one point four. Two point eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two point eight. Yeah, eight, nine, nine, zero. I don't like twos today, apparently. Mm -hmm. Zero point two eight eight. No, no. like two point eight nine zero five cents times ten to the twenty three. That's what I was confused. Yeah. Two twelve twelve times point two. Yes, I agree. Two point eight eight times ten to the twenty three. Eight nine. Eight, nine. Two, 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 Eights are easier to write than twos, apparently. Would this answer be correct? What's wrong with it? We still need our unit. We have our atoms of oxygen. Okay. So the big extra thing, we're doing the same method, but we now have powers of 10. What do powers of 10 tend to do? Screw with your ability to enter things properly in the calculator. Make sure you run enough problems with the powers of 10 to make sure you can enter it into the calculator right. Okay. So, let's do another one. Uh, that one's supposed to be there. No. Yep. Yep. No. Sorry. Couldn't decide where I wanted to go. <clears throat> yep. Say that again. Yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. You're going asking back up to the top. Uh, if I ask you to go to the store and buy a dozen, what do you buy? So you go into the store and just, here's $5, give me 12 Do, the item. If I tell you to go to the store and buy a dozen, you can't buy anything because you don't know what to buy a dozen of. Guess what a mole is? A mole is the same thing as a dozen. One mole of things. I need to know what those things are. So when we're looking at this conversion, that is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of those things. This number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, is mole. Can I say atoms? What is atoms? Atoms, in this case, is the thing that I'm measuring, the thing that I'm counting. Right? Which brings up an interesting question, which gets us into the, kind of the next part. Can I measure one mole of grams? One mole of grams would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd grams. Is that a mass? No. That is the number of the individual gram pieces that I used. Mole does not convert mass, it's a numerical value. Okay? It's how many people are here. Okay? It's not the mass of everybody here. So we have to be careful that that thing applies to something that you count, not that something you measure. Okay? Which is, I believe, what your question was getting at when we're saying the mole of things. We have to make sure that we know what the thing is. Okay? Don't ever tell your future spouse, go buy a dozen. That's just rude. 
Right? You need to tell them what to buy a dozen of. You can come back and be very, very unhappy. When they come back with a dozen Xboxes, you're like, yeah. Yeah, that's probably why you'd be yelling at them. <laughs> or being like, we don't have that many friends. <laughs> <clears throat> the atomic mass on the periodic table can also be used as a molar mass. So when we look at our periodic table, we had a couple of numbers on there. If we look at, let's take chromium. Number in the upper right-hand corner is? Yes, it's 24. Fair enough. The atomic number, which corresponds to what? What property of our chromium? The number of protons. The number underneath that symbol, chromium 52.0, corresponded to the, the atomic mass. Okay. What was the unit on that atomic mass? When we talked about it, what did we say that mass was? We kind of just glossed over that, right? I didn't actually say that was grams or kilograms or anything. I just kind of said it's blah, 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 and we'll worry about it later. Okay? Why are we worrying about it later? The unit that we've talked about for that at 52.00 was 52.00 AMU. What was AMU? Atomic mass unit. Really just a placeholder for saying it's a mass of something that's really, really, really small that are atoms. How do I measure that? I don't, because no balance on the world measures AMUs. Okay? It doesn't exist. Okay? It's a placeholder. Okay? What is it a placeholder for? Well, if we take enough of those atoms, I can now convert that AMU out into a measurable unit that we use frequently, like grams. And the number on that periodic table now at the bottom can also be used as my molar mass instead of my atomic mass. So if I'm looking at the mass of an atom, I can say AMUs. Okay? But AMU is insanely tiny. Remember, our atoms are insanely tiny. Which then means when I go to measure it, I can't measure it. So if I want to measure out chromium, I have to measure out a much larger amount. I have to add enough atoms to it to get it up to a scale that I can work with. How many atoms do I have to add to it to get it up to a reasonable scale? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, to be precise. Okay? And when I add that amount of atoms to the scale, what do I notice for chromium? What I will read off the scale will be 52.00 grams. The numerical value at the bottom is our molar mass, the mass per mole, also known as mass per mole, which would be mass over mole, which happens to be, yeah, it's a conversion factor. Our periodic table gives us the conversion between mass and moles. Okay? That's what that numerical value is. And it will be different for every single element because the atomic mass is different for every single element. Why is the atomic mass different for every single element? Different protons and neutrons, the things that contribute to the mass. Right? Which gets us to where I must have moved a bunch of slides out into that video and didn't realize it. So atomic mass is on our periodic table and can also be used as our molar mass. Okay? What happens if I move to a molecular mass? Well, what does molecular refer to? Molecules. molecules. What makes up a molecule? Atoms. If I know the molar mass for each atom and I add all of those masses together, what have I achieved? The molecular, officially, molar mass. I can use that to now convert. So what is the molar mass of copper 2 nitrite? How do you solve it?
The molar mass of a molecule. How do I determine the molar mass? Take the atomic mass. Okay, what is the atomic mass of copper? Plus the atomic mass of nitrogen. James, shout that out again. Why are you multiplying that by 2? We have to make sure we use our formula. In our formula, how many nitrogens are there? There's 2. That applies forward. What is the atomic mass for oxygen? Why are you multiplying by four? Weren't there only two? There's two of the parentheses. There's two oxygens within said parentheses. Now what do I do? Calculator. It helps if you say that as you do it. Nobody? What'd you get? What is the unit? Grams in one mole or Okay, what do other people get? Sorry, Ying, you're getting yelled at by a couple people. Um, if it was just one, I might let you slide, but 155? Oh, I got sorry. 0.57. That can be either grams or AMUs. Which one do we want to use? More than likely, we'll use grams. Why? That's typically what we measure. But what if the question asked you about AMUs? Then you use AMUs. The unit that we will use is dictated based on the question asked, not based off of necessarily what you want. Typically, we'll go into grams because that's the one we'll use. Was it you? Why is it one mole? Like, why isn't each one one mole? So what are the units on 63.55? It could be AMUs, in which case the answer that we would get all the way through would be AMUs. What's the other option? So what I'm asking is why is, there, why is that only over one mole? That's what we're getting to. Oh, okay. What's the other option? 63.55 what? Grams. Grams per what? Per mole. Per mole. How many moles? Exactly one. That's what the periodic table is giving you. That's why it's the molar mass, which means when we scale through to the out, which might be the next part you're asking, this is grams and moles of hydrogen. Is that the grams of hydrogen? What is that the grams of? Of our copper. Oof. Man, I can't write for crap today. Or one mole of? Or and one mole of copper nitrate. When I split that up, I will have one mole of copper. There's our blue. Yes. I'll have my four, well, four moles of oxygen and my two moles of nitrogen. Does that make sense? So it's a per mole value because we're looking at, at that scale. So it again depends on what scale you want to look at. Okay. So, convert. What is the mass in grams of 0.532 moles of copper to nitrite? 
Oh, dang, I wish I had taken notes and written down what that answer was for the molar mass previously. Huh. Notes can be useful. So we write it out. We look at our units. We need the units to cancel, so we align the units in a way that they cancel out. Conveniently, we wrote down that previous note on what our molar mass was, which was 155.57. I didn't actually write it down, so. This is one mole. What happens? The units cancel, and we'd be left with grams, and we'd be all happy. Okay. Couple extra pieces I want to go through and address. Is this correct work? Mathematically, do we get the same answer? Yes. Do the units work? No. No. And arguably, we actually can't even cancel the moles copper nitrate because we don't have copper nitrate to cancel at the bottom. The unit we'd officially have at the end of this would be moles of copper nitrate times grams divided by moles. That's a pretty crappy unit. Okay. So we can't cancel parts of units out. We have to cancel the entire unit. Okay. So that's going to become a problem. Again, mathematically, not a big issue. And in this chapter, chapter 8, eh, probably not going to matter. But what happens if I want to now convert copper to nitrite to something else? say, through a chemical reaction. Now I really need to know what the grams and moles are referring to because another species has appeared. That's chapter 9. So if I don't use the correct unit, I may end up using the wrong molar mass because I didn't include the substance that's tied to that unit. Kind of make sense? Next part of it. And this just happened to click for me personally, so thank you, Justin, for asking. You said something about Avogadro's number. And well, this is when I use Avogadro's number. Well, I've got moles and I've got grams. So, right, I could say that this was uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd grams is one mole of grams. Okay. Well, this does a couple things. Number one, Moles. <laughs> Give up. Number one, moles of gram does not cancel with moles of copper nitrite. Number two, you're now using moles in grams incorrectly. Remember, moles doesn't relate to mass through Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is a count. There are 6.022 gram objects that are converting out there. Well, that doesn't make any sense. If we'd use the proper unit to begin with, Can I use Avogadro's number now? That doesn't make any sense. Sliding the proper unit in now makes that number look really out of place. Because where do I get the relationship of grams of a substance to moles of a substance? Well, from the periodic table. And the periodic table doesn't have any numbers to the power of 10 to the 23rd. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. And nowhere in time will that ever happen. Okay. So if I use the full unit, it can sometimes lead me down the correct path. The instant I start taking shortcuts and not using the full unit, both the measurement and the substance, I can start getting sidetracked into other weird conversions use the full unit, that should clean it up. So that has to be our one, five, five, seven, one. Okay, kind of makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay.
right? So another one. What is the mass in grams of 2.55 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead? Okay, in that time, everybody should absolutely have achieved, excuse me, this point. Okay. Ideally, you went further, but you should have gotten at least to here. Okay. So we know what we want. We want grams of lead as our answer. We know what we're starting with, 2.55 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead. I know the atoms of lead need to cancel, and I need grams of lead. Do I know the conversion factor between grams and atoms? No. What is the conversion factor the periodic table gives me? The grams per mole. I'm in atoms. Periodic table doesn't help me. I could also give me AMUs, but I didn't write AMUs. So what does that mean about this conversion? It's not good, I gotta to convert to something else. So what can I convert the atoms of lead to? I can convert them into the moles of lead. Okay. What is the relationship between atoms of lead and moles of atoms of lead? One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 20 Third, <laughs> even an old dog can learn new tricks. Atoms of lead cancel. What unit would I now have? Moles of lead. Moles of lead. Right? Is that what I want for an answer? No. no. So moles of lead must disappear. What do I want for an answer? Grams, Grams of lead. Is there a conversion factor between the grams and moles? Yes. yes. Where is that found? That is now found on the periodic table. As soon as I find lead. 207.2 grams is one mole. The moles of lead cancel, and I'm left with grams of lead. I can now punch it into the calculator and get an answer. Okay, makes sense? So sometimes we need to bring in Avogadro's numbers, sometimes not. It all depends on the question, okay? Which gets us to the next part, are there questions? Yes? When you set these up and you solve them in your calculator, do you multiply across first on the breakers and then divide? Yes. So... Because what you're asking is a calculator question, talk to me after class, okay. Okay, which is true for everybody. If you have a question on how to enter it into your calculator, please ask, and I will go through and work through that, just not in class. Um, rounding out to sig figs, we round out to three. I've been waiting for someone to ask about sig figs again. Um, sig figs. How many sig figs in this conversion? Three. Four. Four. Notice we're only writing one. That's really actually 1.00000, that's our infinite, okay? It's the gram that's carrying our sig figs. Sig figs in the next one, okay? I wrote it out at four because of our 6.022. And the first one, three, which means my answer needs to get reported to three sig figs. Is there a request for what the actual answer is? So it sounds like yes, because people are shouting it out. I've got 87.738 going once. We got a second. So let's take a look at our sig figs. We can only carry three sig figs. One, two, three. The first insignificant, smaller, so I don't do anything. The number becomes... 87.7 .7 grams lead. Okay. You want to do it again? Yeah. Yep. How many fluorine atoms are present in 2.25 grams of fluorine gas? 
and I'll throw one massive caution here. That's all I'll say, caution. Uh, what did we start with? 2.25 grams of fluorine gas. What's, uh, so there we go, it's written. I want to be able to convert grams of fluorine to atoms of fluorine, right? Can I do that? Grams and atoms, does that exist? No. So what do I need to do? Grams to mole. Or I could do grams to mole. Where do I find that information? Periodic table. Periodic table. What does the periodic table tell us? 19. Oh, man. Oh, oh, stupid sick figs. Grams is one mole. Notice the 19 went on the bottom this time. Why did the 19 go on the bottom? Because that's where the unit dictates. The gram unit is the one that gets the number. Okay. And I actually want to pause for a second here. I was just going to let it run through, but I think too many people are copying this down. Anybody have any objections with what's written up there? What is your objection, Nikolai? Fluorine gas. And what is fluorine gas? Diatomic. Symbol is not F, it's... F2. Why does that then become relevant? There's two of them, which means when I go through to do that conversion, that needs to be F2 and F2. Is it 19? No. no. What is it? 38.R00. Hi. We now have moles of F2. What do I want? Atoms, so I need to get rid of that. Moles F2 on the bottom, and what do I want on top? Atoms. No, uh, that doesn't work, sorry. Yep, nope. Yep. Is it atoms? We'll do molecules of F2. Why molecules better than atoms? Because it's F2, it's diatomic. We're looking at the molecule. So we have one mole of F2 is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of F2. Is molecules of F2 what I want as an answer? No, I want atoms. What do I need to do? Molecules needs to show up on the bottom. Atoms needs to show up on top. What is that relationship? Two atoms is one molecule. This is found in the balanced formula. This is found, I know this, if you're all looking down, you didn't see that. The middle conversion, the 6.022, is Avogadro's number. Where do you find Avogadro's number? That's in your brain, because you should have memorized it. Uh, the one over 38. Our periodic table. Okay. We can now go through and solve it and get our answer. Okay. Questions? So, the method holds. It's now just a question of finding the conversion factor and sliding it in. As we continue to move through, guess what's going to happen? We're going to get more and more conversion factors, which means you need to be careful in deciding which conversion factor to use because you may have six different ones that you could possibly use. One of them will lead you in the correct direction. The others won't necessarily ruin the question, but you'll end up removing that information later on. You'll end up running the calculation and then undoing the calculation at a later stage. Okay. We'll pick up there, wherever there is. What's the next one? Yeah, another one. We'll pick up with another one on Tuesday.